February orders down 10% from January. Is that a disaster or not? I don't think so. Let me show you why not. Hi, I'm Pat McGibbon. I'm the Vice President of Strategic Analytics with AMT, and I'm here to talk about the USMTO order program for February. February orders of $304 million were down 10% from January. And a lot of people have called me in the last couple of days asking, what does that mean? Have we hit a peak? Have we uh, about to go into a recession? Uh, and that's a lot of doom and gloom talk that's not necessary. Uh, what I'd like to point to is if you take uh, IMTS out of the picture for 2014, you look at the average value for the first uh, eight months of um, 2014, January through August, you're looking at a number that was about $287 million on average per month. Then you take October to the present time, and the average value is $297 million. Now, I, I don't think we're on a, a downturn. We're at a plateau, and it's a, it's a critical time. Uh, we've gone through this before in this re uh, recovery. We saw in 2013 uh, a slight slowdown before we began another uptick in 2014. And I expect that 2015 is somewhat similar, that we're going to see a slight slowing in the beginning of the year, but as we get out of June and head towards the fi finish line in December, orders will again begin to pick up and we'll meet that 5% growth rate that Oxford Economics has shared with us both last October and in January at our webinars. But why are we at a plateau and what can we do to uh, turn this thing around? Well, to be honest with you, the environment we're in is pretty darn good. You've got lower energy prices and why that hurts the energy industry itself uh, as far as their capital spending. For most of our other customer industries, it's a godsend. It's going to send up uh, their ability to spend more money on capital equipment because they're spending less on energy and because uh, their overall product costs are going down. It also, uh, you take a look at the environment, our labor rates are, have been basically static for, uh, and relative to the rest of the world. Labor costs here have been relatively static compared to the 300% increase you've seen in some Asian countries and doubling of prices in some of the South American markets that we compete against. So again, the environment here is looking pretty good, but we could make it better. And who could help us? The federal government. There's a lot of things going on in the, co in the course of uh, 2015 that could have a significant impact on creating confidence level for our manufacturers to make further capital equipment investors. Because I would say that one of the reasons why we're at this plateau is so many manufacturers are concerned about the rapid changes in some of our key uh, indicators over the course of the last six months. I mean, just in, this, in September, price of oil was at $100 a barrel. And today we're seeing it almost half that amount. When will it go back up? Uh, what does it mean? The dollar was a really, really good uh, level relative to most currencies we trade in uh, up until the, um, last October, and then it began to strengthen. And we're probably going to see it strengthen further through the 2015 as we see U.S. interest rates begin to climb sometime at the end of this year. No one knows exactly when, but almost everyone's certain that the interest rates are going to move up when the Federal Reserve opens, uh, changes the rate at the open window. So with that kind of uh, disturbances in the market, Manufacturers are a little bit cautious, and our government can help take some of that lack of confidence out of the picture. They're considering a number of issues in 2015 that help solidify what the market will be going into the future. And once our manufacturers know that, once our customers know that, then they can make capital equipment expenditure decisions with a known return on investment given what those markets are going to be in the future. So what are the issues? Probably top of the list, the Trade Promotion Authority. It's being considered by Congress now. We have two major trade agreements out there, a fair trade agreement with uh, the EU and one going with our Pacific Rim trading partners. TPA is important to help make sure these agreements and all the work that USTR has done on getting to where they are today come to fruition for US manufacturers, creating wonderful export opportunities overseas. Without TPA, these agreements will go through an agonizing trip through Capitol Hill that could result in their denial, changing, beyond, uh, changing the, the requirements beyond what our trading partners are willing to accept, or just die up there uh, in, in different committees. So TPA is in, in essential to seeing that we get the most benefit out of the work that our government officials at USTR have done over the course of about five, seven years. Second issue, regulatory reform. There's a basket of items going through Congress during the court first half of 2015 that could, uh, in some cases, improve our regulatory positions, in other cases, solidify what they are. And, you know, our customers don't need to have the best of everything, but they, if they have the certainty about what the rules will be, they can win. So the regulatory package is going through now. If we can get it passed, the rules will be solid, 
going into the future, giving our manufacturers an opportunity to make decisions and knowing what the opportunities will mean and what the return on investment on a piece of capital equipment will yield. Okay. The last one, the last one is the tax extenders. And we talked about the tax extenders last month uh, when explaining that there was a sudden surge in December that was sort of somewhat uh, unexpected. And that surge was because there was a number of inventory products, machines that came quite literally off the, off the shelves and into the customers' factories in a matter of a couple of weeks because tax extenders were extended retroactively in 2014 in the last weeks of November. There wasn't a whole lot of time to do the engineering, design, and build out and delivery for some of the more sophisticated and productive products that our manufacturers could provide in the United States. Uh, only, comp only companies that could really take advantage of it were looking for uh, simple solutions that were in inventory with their builders. If we can get the tax extenders extended permanently, or at least past the beginning of the year, it gives it our, our manufacturers who are making these capital expenditures the opportunity to put that cost factor, the reduction of their overall cost, into play. And, our, and you, our, our members and participants in the USMTO, the opportunity to sell your products on the, the added value of what the tax extenders provide. So as we go forward into, to, into March and the rest of the year, we're looking for our federal government to help us, uh, help you, uh, to bring uh, manufacturing uh, back into the forefront and to boost capital equipment expenditures, making us even more productive and a greater force in the global manufacturing scene. With that, we'll talk to you next month about March orders. <laughs>